Okay, another day, another mobile call. We're going to go check out a 97 F-150 uh, that has a few concerns to it. It has a check engine light on. I guess he had the codes ran somewhere, and it was lean codes. So I'm hoping it's just a PCV valve or something like that, a, a PCV line that's common on those. And he also has an ABS uh, concern, a light on, and I have no idea what the code is on that one. So we're going to go check that. I brought the IDS bunch of tools and we're gonna go in a lease diagnosis so hopefully I can walk you through that as you can see I brought the whole crew along got my son here brought both the dogs we're gonna go for a little car ride and check it out um, so we're bringing it along hopefully you guys enjoy this okay so we have a few codes going on here um, I already pulled the codes for the ABS module and of course that's the uh, rear disc sensor I just need to verify that but what's more interesting here I haven't really covered this is anything to do with the IAC there's a couple different codes in the 15 series there that have to do with the IAC trim, basically, and how well the PCM can control it. Now on this one, my lady, dogs are going nuts. Um, it's a 1506, and it's saying the duty cycle is actually higher than expected. Uh, what that usually indicates is when there's a concern uh, where it needs to go higher just to maintain idle. Uh, but in this case, um, Maybe a pending code, but we're having a concern where the truck starts up just fine, everything's just fine, but the idle is sitting around 1200 RPM and the IAC cannot control it and bring it down. So I'll show you how that looks right now. Um, go ahead and start it. And then what we'll do is we'll go over the live data here and I'll show you what it's doing. Okay, you can see all the pertinent information is on here that we need for this kind of concern. You can see the IAC duty cycle is nice and low. It's trying to bring that idle down the best it can. Um, our fuel trims are in spec, just fine. Our MAF voltage is correct. This RPM is hovering around 12, 13 our RPM. So that's correct. O2 sensor to switching, just fine. Okay, and we also, down here you can see the RPM. It's way high, okay? And the RPM that's desired for this engine operating range is around six, seven, eight, 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 six, seven high RPM. And we got some short-term fuel trims down below here. So what's going on here is the IAC is actually sticking in the bore and it has no control over. So I'm gonna show you a quick, easy check you can do uh, while the whole engine is assembled so you can see if it is sticking or not. Now the very first thing you want to do is make sure the fuel trims are in spec, which they are. You can see the fuel trims are hovering around zero down there, okay? And then our long terms are okay. So it's, it's generally not an issue with unmetered air coming in, plus it's running absolutely perfectly smooth. So let's go after the IAC. All right, so I'm back with the IAC tester. Uh, it's basically a noid light that fits right in the connector on there. You'll see it'll power up and pull some amperage with the incandescent bulb in there once we turn the key on. All right, turn the key on. Nice and bright like that. I mean, it should be really bright. Uh, that's full amperage like that. Quick, easy test like that. What I also can do on the scan tool here is test it by going through the numbers. Okay, so now what I'll do is a duty cycle. And I'll keep increasing it. That's 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And this tests the uh, driver inside of the PCM also. And then we'll cut it off. So we know the circuit and the PCM are just fine. Okay, we got the new valve on here and it's responding just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Just two bolts, little eight mils, just snug them down. And don't forget your connector over there. After this, we should be good to go on here. New gasket. Okay. All right, here we go. We're gonna try out the new IAC on there. It's all installed. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start monitoring a few things here and then we'll reset the cam once it responds and we'll do a full learn on here. Now what you're looking for is for the RPM of the engine to match the RPM desired right here. This is what the PCM wants. 
uh, and these, you know, the, the amperage and the percentage really doesn't matter. It's if these two match. So let's go ahead and start it. Just had a fuel filter, so it's <clears throat> a little hard starting. So once it comes down like this and it's running, these two should match pretty close it has precise control over the IAC, but it's a stepper motor. Um, so it can just step it in small increments with the pulse width uh, to match. So you can see these are pretty darn close. And I would say within 100 RPM or so, it should be matching what it wants for the current engine conditions. So you can see on here already, this is a good fix. So we're gonna go ahead and reset the cam, clear all the old codes and uh, learn values out and let it learn it idle here. It's a good fix though. IACs are not too common, but this, this truck had a lot of things going against it, and uh, this one definitely needed it. This is absolutely perfect right here. Look at these two. Now, one other quick, easy test you can do that I did not go over in this video is to go over to the vehicle while it's exhibiting this concern of a high idle, and you simply go over to the IAC and disconnect it. Now, once you disconnect it, the vehicle should sputter a little bit and die out. The only place the engine should be getting all that idle air at bypass is through the idle air control valve. So if, it's, if it, it stays running afterwards, you know the vehicle has a concern with either the valve sticking or a large vacuum leak that the, in, that the PCM is compensated for, and therefore it's running off that external air and, it, and that's how it's actually running and of course getting too much air and bringing up the idle and your concern to begin with. Now the reason why I don't always use this is because you still don't know if it's the valve or a vacuum leak. But it does uh, you know, eliminate anything in the circuitry, anything with the, the PCM whacking out and doing something weird and compensating for something that's not there. It'll, it'll, it'll get rid of all of that as far as a cause for the concern. So anything the PCM and the driver or a bad input to the PCM. Now the other test that I did go over in the video I want to clarify a little bit on is using the Noid light, which is usually for injectors and coils. You simply plug it right into here. I mean, it plugs directly into there, uh, fits perfectly, doesn't spread to terminals. And like I said, once you turn the key on, the PCM does a, a, a pre-check before the engine starts. It'll actually run power through that loop and that circuit and make sure the IAC circuit and the motor and everything is okay. So it'll automatically power up, be nice and bright like that. And you'll know the PCM and the driver and the wires and everything is good to go without even having a scan tool on hand. Now, if you do have a concern with your vehicle and you can't diagnose it yourself, my company, BSG Automotive, does come out and do mobile service calls in the greater Chicagoland area. I'll have links to that down below. You can put a service request in online anytime. And of course, you can call my, my business during regular business hours. There is no surcharge for coming out and doing a service call like that. Uh, standard diagnosis fees and repair fees on there. So it's a great option to avoid towing charges. That's about it for this video. You can keep in contact with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. There's links down below. Uh, you can ask me your personal questions on your vehicle so we can help you try to diagnose it even from afar.